So um, there are main, uh, two main types of smoke detector out there for residential area. And uh, there are photoelectric and the ionization um, smoke detector. They, um, they pretty much look the same. The one, uh, they look like the one I have in my hand. But the difference between them is the way they work. And uh, uh, can you put, click on the photoelectric? Okay, I'll go back. So basically, photo, uh, photoelectric smoke detector work in a sense that it counts the particle that go into the chamber of the uh, smoke detector. Therefore, it will interrupt the lights going through. Then the smoke detector will know, okay, some, some smoke is coming up, something gotta be happening. And then it may be fire or some dust going in. And uh, that's how it will send alarm to the homeowner. Hey, there might be a fire. And uh, ionization is to, it worked in, in a very similar sense of photoelectric, but um, in a different philosophy. And uh, ionization basically, I forgot how it works, but it works. And, uh, but both of these, you cannot install within four inches of the um, ceiling or corners for the very reason I mentioned about the dust may get into it. <coughs> Next slide. So how to choose a right smoke detector? Early, so the reason why we need a fire uh, smoke detector is because early fire warning is critical when a fire broke out. Therefore, it is important to know how fire det 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 detector works and what type of smoke detector best suits your need. And as we mentioned in previous slide, there are two main types of smoke detector we generally use at home. And uh, now we will go into a brief discussion on different, the difference between them. Photoelectric detector may detect visible fire particles sooner than ionization detector. Ionization detector may detect visible, invisible fire or fast flaming fire sooner than photoelectric detector. And uh, anybody got any question on that? What do you mean by Invisible fire, let's say there's a different classes of fire. And uh, let's say there's a fuel fire, and uh, you can see the visible fire coming out of it, and the flame will come out. That's when the smoke will get produced in, um, in this sense, right? So you can see, okay, there's a fire. But if you have an electric fire, they may, there may not always be visible fire to it, but something is burning, and the dust, we call it invisible fire. That's the example of it. Of it. Anybody? All right, so since my own, own home is constructed with wood structure, I will choose ionization detector as they will react quicker to fast flaming fire because we all know like wood burn like in a snap. So I think ionization will work best in my home for my situation. Next slide, please. All right, now we come to the installation of the smoke detector. Um, before we install, we need to know what govern, what, what's the code's requirements for the smoke detector, right? And then we also need to figure out what's the location we're gonna install them because uh, the code will require us to have smoke detector in certain area and but not to have it in another area. Also, the code will tell us what kind of wiring method we're gonna need for specific type of the um, smoke detector or the environment of it. Let's say residential, commercial, industrial, stuff like that. And uh, the NEC article that governs the smoke detector installation is NEC se Article 760. It's in page seven, uh, 7646 in the uh, NEC book. And uh, it will cover the fire alarm system. And uh, we need to consult that to make sure we understand all the requirements before we proceed to installation. So now we know the requirements of NEC, we will start installation. Now we need to pick location. The smoke detector shouldn't be installed in the kitchen and the bathroom for the very reason that those areas generally um, produce a lot of smoke or particles that may trigger false alert of the smoke detector. And uh, the smoke detector should be, in, shall, sh sh shall be installed in every sleeping area and the spaces outside the uh, sleeping area because we definitely want to be alarmed when there's a fire broke out when we sleep. And, uh, that's the very reason why. And uh, this graph will show us the location that it needs to be, and uh, the location it should not be in. 
and uh, the distance between each other and stuff like that. Anybody got any question? No? Next slide, please. Um, the smoke detector should have its own branch circuit. We will need to install a home run. The home run means dedicated, dedicated run of electrical wire from the breaker panel. So those smoke detector, they need to have their own circuits. They cannot be combined with your outlets. They cannot combine, be combined with your light circuit for the reason that if one of those uh, circuits break out, we don't interfe uh, inter interfere with the function or um, functionality of the smoke detectors. The smoke detector should be connected in series. And uh, I hope everyone knows what series is, but basically series is one after the other. And uh, in one direction. Electricity flow in one direction. Open the door, please. Once the branch circuit is completed, we will need to install the smoke detector. And don't forget to install backup battery in the smoke detector. So once we have the branch circuit, uh, dedicated Encourage branch here, circuit please. installed for, for the uh, smoke detector, now we need to hook up the base of the detector. So the smoke detector is constructed in three pieces, basically. One is wiring, one is the base, that where you can attach it to. Um, to, to the ceiling, and the, another one is the smoke detector itself. And uh, it's very important to remember, before you, before you complete your installation of the smoke detector, don't take off this cover, because normally we install the um, smoke detector during renovation or construction phase of the um, property. If we take off the protective cover, those particles may get in there, so we will have a defective smoke detector right, right off the bat. So don't do that, put it in. Once everything's um, installed, we take off the cover, and we don't forget to install a uh, backup uh, battery if it doesn't have one. If they have one and they have a tap like this, don't forget to pull it, because otherwise it may not work. And once the uh, smoke detector installation is completed, performing function tests on all smoke detectors. I'm talking about all of them. Um, in accordance with manufacturing instruction, because we don't manufacture these, we cannot make up some um, testing procedure that we think is right. We need to follow the manufacturer's uh, specification or instruction on how to test them to make sure we're actually doing the right thing and to make sure it functions properly. And uh, anybody got any question on that? Yes, please. Uh, okay, so what type, of, what type of functions, I mean, test do we run? And you know, you know, how do I know when do I need to change um, my smoke detector? So, I'll answer the second part of the question first. Mm -hmm. So the, um, the time we will know we need to change a, we need to replace something inside the smoke detector is when smoke detector start to give you beeps, beep sound. That's when it indicates, okay, your smoke detector has low battery, it's a good time to replace them. And in terms of how to do a properly, um, proper test function test on the smoke detector itself after it's done, I would highly recommend you to read the um, manufacturer's um, instruction because every smoke detector may function differently. If I tell you something now, but you have a different brand, you may do the wrong thing. So every smoke detector will come with an instruction user's manual or install, installation manual. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Russell? Do you think uh, a smoke detector should be installed in every room in the household? A smoke detector should be installed. Can you go back to the previous slide, please? Okay, so smoke detectors should be installed in every room besides bathroom and the kitchen. Also, you need to install the smoke detector in the basement as well. So basically, every living area, every place that may have a fire, may, may pose a fire hazard, you want to have them, and it, they need to be running in one circuit. Remember, in one circuit, you cannot branch it out from a light circuit or um, socket, um, um, the, 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 the receptacle circuit. Two minutes. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's wrong. It is wrong. Okay, next slide. Okay, summary. So in this pre uh, presenta presentation, we have briefly covered the installation of the smoke detector in residential project. We have identified the governing NEC code, wiring method, and the installation placement of the smoke detector. During installation and placing, we, all, we need to also consider the safety during work. We need to turn off the circuit breaker, very important. Safety is very important. Uh, to ensure the electrician will not get shocked during installation, PPE shall be weird. It shall be weird at all times. Anybody got any more questions? 
time. Okay, thank you everybody for coming.